To begin, we have our lab dog, Bailey, a golden retriever, who has been trained to walk up and sniff some small objects that we place on a ground plane in front of her. And this is being visualized using Schlieren photography. The ground plane has a small heater embedded in it, and so you can see a plume of warm air rising. This is required by the Schlieren equipment in order to visualize the airflow. You can also, in some cases, see the warm air generated by the dog's breathing and sniffing. So we place these small objects. She walks up and takes a sniff. And if you look carefully, you'll be able to see the air entering the nostril and sometimes the air that's exhaled from the nostril that's generally directed backward. This footage was shot at normal speed and the dog sniffs five times per second. That's five complete inhale and exhale cycles in one second. So it goes by pretty fast and you can't see a lot of detail at this speed. Later on we have some high speed footage that slows this down considerably and makes it more visible. Now here's a different view of Bailey sniffing a dog treat and the Schlieren optic shows us the exhaled jets of air from her nose which are very turbulent and which are directed not straight forward but sort of down into the sides. In this view you'll be able to see both jets slightly off angle and you can see the left and right jets both directed downward and both very turbulent. This is an Airedale, a different breed of dog that sniffs somewhat differently, sniffing a scent from a squeeze bottle. And now sniffing a treat on the ground plane. Notice that this dog doesn't point its nose directly at the source of the scent but rather moves up to it from behind. So now we look directly into the dog's nose using a ring light to see what's inside. And you can see the mid-lateral slits at either side. This is where the exhaust jets come out that you saw earlier in the Schlieren footage. And you can also see here in slow motion, so as to make it clearer, an orifice up toward the top of the inside of the nostril the alar fold and it opens to allow air to go in during the inhale stroke of sniffing and that air goes into a tube that leads all the way to the back of the nose called the tube is called the dorsal meatus and it leads directly back to the olfactory area so on inhale it directs the air straight back and on exhale those midlateral slits cause the air to form jets which as we'll, we've seen and we'll see more detail later these jets tend to stir up the environment and they tend to induce an airflow to help draw air into the nose for sniffing. Now we have close-up video footage of Bailey sniffing a scent source on the ground plane. She comes up from behind it, sniffing. This is in slow motion. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Notice the turbulence pointed rearward. Oh, she licked it. Have to start over. Comes up from behind it. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, with turbulence being directed backwards and drawing air in from forwards. Notice how close the dog's nose is to the scent source, essentially touching it. She has to get up close, and she scans around the area. 
not just the sense source, but to try to scan the area where it is in order to get the best signal. Now we'll set Schlieren photography aside and use a different flow visualization technique. We've coated the ground plane with a very thin layer of talcum powder. And we're looking at a black background and lighting the scene from the sides so that the powder particles will be illuminated and we can see them against the dark background. So here's Bailey sniffing something and you can see that she's kicking up a lot of particles. Not every surface has particles like this. but This is a specialized technique to make the surface interaction of dog sniffing visible. When she exhales you get these twin turbulent jets that you've already seen in the Schlieren footage. These strike the surface, they release particles, detach particles from the surface that tend to roll up in vortices and now that the particles are free they can actually be inhaled as secondary scent sources. close up you see she approaches the scent source from behind and now we don't see inhale with this technique but we see the exhaled air disturbing particles and the particles become airborne this is a little clearer when we look at it from the front dog approaches the scent source and upon exhale, you see the twin jets interact on either side of the nose with the particles. So that's a nice picture of what we call the starting wall jet. These jets that are exhaled from the nose strike the surface, they roll out along the surface and roll up into twin vortices on both the left and the right side. So the upshot of these particle image tracer videos is that canine olfaction and sniffing a surface is an active process. It's not just drawing a scent in, but it's actually interacting with the surface to disturb whatever's there, get some secondary scent sources in the air, get, get them airborne, that they can be inhaled, to actually sample the surface more effectively. The final clip in this collection is the same flow visualization technique but a different dog. This is Malinois, a trained detection dog, and the scent source is a small piece of carrot. She doesn't like the carrot very much. Thank you for watching.